Hello friends, Osiris here, and the 7 star Meganium Terror Raid event is now back for its second time out in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to cover all of the details as well as the best Pokemon to solo this with in your game. So a little bit late to the party on this one, wasn't able to do an upload last week because I was at the European International Championships, but the Meganium is back in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for its second time out. We can take a look at all of the details. It is running from April the 12th until the 14th, so over this weekend. So you've got a few days to take advantage of this one. We'll be level 100. It will have its hidden ability Leaf Guard, and the moves it will have access to are going to be Seed Bomb, Zen Headbutt, Body Press, Curse, with the additional moves of Reflect, Light Screen, and Bulldoze. My dear Smog, it can never be shiny, and it will have the Psychic Terror Typing. It will have the Nature of Impish, boosting its defense stat, and can only be catchable once per save file. It will have the item drops of a normal 7-star Terror Raid, lots of large and XL candies, Psychic Terror Shards, TM, and an Ability Patch, alongside a lot of other high-cost items. But the big important thing is the Herba Mystica drops that will be returning with this 7-star Raid. So every time you do beat the Meganium, you're going to have a 3% chance of at least one of these dropping and you can get multiples of them as well. So it's a really good event to take part in to farm for these Herba Mystica over this weekend. Alongside the Meganium as well, we're going to see the Blissey Spotlight Terror Raids returning in game. These will be five star Terror Raids and they will offer up a lot of Terror Shards as well as a lot of rare and large and XL candies. These will be level 75, of course, with the moves Heal Pulse, Last Resort, Soft Bold and Seismic Toss and their terror type will be random. There is no catch limit on these either. And they have the standard rate for being shiny. Again, you're going to see a lot of different blissies appearing on your map. So a decent event to also take part in alongside the Meganiums to just farm for items if you need them in your game. But like I say, it will be running until the 14th of April. And on the 14th, when it does end at midnight, we may get the next 7-star Terror Raid event announced. So to access the 7-star Terror Raid event in your game, you're going to need to come to your menu in Poker Portal and then come down to Mystery Gift and then check Poker Portal News. If you click on this, it will connect you to the internet and update all your Terror Raid dens on your map to so then be able to go and locate the 7-star Terror Raid den for Meganium while it's running. Now the builds that we're going to feature in today's video are going to start off with the most consistent build I feel that we've got for this raid over the weekend and it is going to be Skeletage. All available in the base game so you don't need the DLCs to actually get this Pokemon. One of the starter Pokemon and if you chose it as a starter that is a bit of a bonus. Level 100, hyper trained, make sure that you max out those IVs and the terror type for the Skeletage is going to be Ghost with the held item of the Shell Bell. All of the builds that we feature in today's video, of course, like always, will be featured in the description below if you want to take a look at those after the video. Now, the moveset that we've got in the Skeletage is going to be Protect, Slack Off, Shadow Ball, and Torch Song, with the most important thing on this Skeletage being its hidden ability, Unaware. So you're going to have to use an ability patch to get that on the Skeletage. And of course, if you do want the Slack Off as well, it is an egg move, so find something in your boxes with Slack Off delete a move on the Skeledurge and make it hold a Mirror Herb item, then set up a picnic with the Skeledurge and the Pokemon with access to Slack Off and it'll be transferred onto this Pokemon. Protect is a TM as well, but Torch Song is its signature attacking move. The EV spread that we've got on the Skeledurge is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack and 252 EVs in Special Defense. And we'll get into the raid in a moment to show you exactly what you need to do in this raid to beat the Meganium very consistently especially if you are looking to farm those Herba Mystica over the weekend. The other build that we're featuring in today's video is going to be for Annihilate. For a few reasons, it's in the base games, and a lot of you probably already have Annihilate built in your games already. It is level 100. Make sure you do hyper train it, and the terror typing on this Annihilate is going to be Ghost, again, with a Shell Bell held item. Just make sure that you maximize all those IVs and hyper train them if any of them aren't 31 already. The moveset that we've got for the Annihilate is going to be Focus Energy, Bulk Up, Taunt, and Rage Fist. And then the ability is going to be Defiant. That's going to mean if we do take any stat drops throughout the raid that we're likely to do against the Meganium, then we get an attack boost for our troubles. The EV spread on this Annihilate is going to be 252 EVs in HP, 252 EVs in defense, and the remaining EVs, those four in attack, 
with an adamant nature again this build will be featured down in the description below and like i said these are the two builds that i recommend the skeleturge is the most consistent out of the two the annihilate's a little bit faster but it is more dependent on rng but we'll jump into the raid now i'll show you how quick it can be with these pokemon to beat the meganium when the raid begins against the meganium the turn zero it is going to set up a light screen and reflect this is before we're able to click in or choose any options now the light screen and reflect are going to give a 1.5 times boost to its defenses so physical and special until these screens disappear so five turns is how long they last so just to be aware your attacking options aren't going to be doing as much damage until the screens go away so when we're doing this initial setup if you're wondering why there isn't much attack power going off onto the meganium this is the reason why first turn you're going to see us lock in for that torch song now we're just basically chasing our terrestrialization at this stage so just locking in with the torch song that's going to boost our special attack as well by one stage every time we do it We'll see the Meganium go for a mixture of Curse, Zen Headbutt, and also Seed Bomb into the Skeledurge at this stage. But don't worry about any of the boosts that the Meganium's getting access to. The Curse will boost its attack and defense by one stage every time it uses it. But because of our unaware ability, we ignore any boosts that the Meganium is getting access to. Here we go. We are going to go for that Terrestrialization. Turn 4 and lock in with a shadow ball this is pretty much predominantly going to be the main move that we'll be using to damage meganium but at this early stage of the match there is a few things you are going to need to do to make sure that you get to the end point where you can then just spam the shadow ball until the end of the raid now shadow ball like i said the light screen still in effect so not going to be doing as much damage here as you maybe would expect on plus three but it's doing the damage that we need at this stage. This will probably activate the shield on the Meganium. And then at the same time, it will probably nullify our stat boost on our side of the field. So getting rid of that plus three special attack that we've got access to. And here you go. There is the shield activating. And also on top of this, we will see it nullify the stat changes and abilities on our side of the field. Now, that key turn I was talking about earlier is right now. When it does nullify your stats and your abilities, this is the turn where we need to protect. This is the only turn where unaware is not in effect. And those boosts that the Meganium has got access to will hit for a lot more damage. So to avoid being knocked out at this stage, we go for the protect. Now our ability is back intact. Now... We will have lost all of those boosts that we've got through the Torch Song, but this is where we go for another six Torch Songs here. This is going to boost our special attack to plus six after the sixth one. And it's going to mean that our Shadow Balls are doing a lot more damage. Like I say, our unaware ability is now back intact. After that turn, the Meganium is not going to do that again throughout the battle. So we're pretty safe here just going for six Torch Songs, get our special attack boosted up to plus six so we can do as much damage as possible and make the raid as quick as possible now if you do get lower health at any stage throughout this setup where you're going for the six torch songs just use your slack off to get that health back because you're going to want to try and keep yourself in as healthy a place as possible sometimes if you have something like a god of war next to you with heal pulse um then it will be restoring your health that's going to be nice you're not always going to be able to guarantee that and if you've got something like our bolivia as well with the grassy terrain that will also help you out although it will be boosting the power of seed bomb as well so a little bit counteractive but it will be recovering health as you go so now if we look special attack is plus six now we can just lock in with those shadow balls and we'll be able to recover a lot of health going through this raid now the light screen is faded at this stage so we don't have to worry about that. And you can see we're chunking away at this Meganium quite nicely. We're going to cover a nice chunk of health here. So we're not in any danger of getting knocked out at this stage. And Meganium will nullify the stat drops on its side of the field. But because we're not lowering any stats on its side of the field, we don't need to worry about that turn at all. We can just lock in from here on out with the Shadow Balls. Two more will break the shield and then I would say another four will probably get rid of it. And there we go, friends. One last Shadow Ball and it is as easy as that. The raid timer is pretty healthy still. We've got plenty of time to knock this out. But the Skeleturge able to beat this Meganium pretty consistently and a very nice option for you to go into this raid over the weekend if you are planning to do this one. So I hope you have fun with this build. But like I say, if you want a faster one, I would definitely recommend the Annihilate. And there we get a salty Herba Mystica for our troubles. 
So the other build that we're featuring in today's video is going to be for the Annihilate. So we'll show you exactly what you need to do to beat this pretty easily in your game. It is going to be a lot faster than Skeledurge, but it is a lot more reliant on RNG and can go wrong sometimes. So as I say, not the most consistent build, but when it works, it works great. Turn zero again, you're going to see the Meganium set up its reflecting light screen, giving it a 1.5 boost to its defenses for the next five turns. But turn one, we're going to lock in with a taunt. That's going to prevent the Meganium for setting up a curse. That's pretty important in these early stages of the raid, especially with the Annihilate build that we've got going forward. So we'll get the taunt off. That's going to prevent it from going for the curse. Like you can see, stopping it there. Turn two, we're going to lock in with a bulk up. That's going to give us a boost to our attack and our defense by one stage, meaning that we can take these attacks from the Meganium a lot better. And we can also do a lot more damage. Now, if you do get lucky here, you're going to avoid the Zen Headbutt. But if you do take it, that's not the worst thing in the world. You're not going to take too much damage from it anyway. And it does boost the power of your Rage Fist. Turn three, we're going to lock in with a Focus Energy. That's going to boost our critical hit chances throughout the rest of the raid. And you can really see if the Meganium does get affected by a burn here, then it really is going to limit its ability to go for any big damage. Now turn three. Four, we're going to go for another taunt because the taunt wears off after three turns. This is just to mitigate the fact and stop it from setting up another curse in this raid before the shield goes up. So we're at a good stage now where we can start launching our rage fists off. We'll go for this. If we get a critical hit, that puts us in a great position going forward, but it's not always guaranteed. This is where the RNG factor comes into the raid. So you can see here, we're not quite at the point where the Meganium is going to set up a shield yet, but we are getting pretty close to it now. If we did get a critical hit there, it would set up the shield, but we are going to be in a position where we are going to get another Rage Fist off before that shield is set up from the Meganium. And when the shield is generally set up as well from the Meganium, it's going to nullify these stat boosts on our side of the field as well as our abilities for one turn so another zen head but coming out here you got to remember with rage fist every time we do take an attack its base power will increase by 50 base points so doing a lot more damage now is the turn where we're going to see the meganium set up its shield and there we go nullifying the stat changes on our side of the field so the first thing we're going to do after that is set up another bulk up now, the problem is the shield's gone up. The Meganium going to be able to go for those curses. So that's something that we want to keep an eye out for going forward in the match. And it is exactly going to do that. So unfortunately, we are not able to stop or launch a taunt off at this stage with the shield up because it will be blocked and it will fail. But we can go for one to two bulk ups at this stage. But we are going to want to try and chase down our terrestrialization as soon as possible so we can get rid of that psychic weakness that we've now got access to. We'll see the uh, another curse coming out from the Meganium here. Sometimes it will go for a Zen Headbutt, but it does depend on the RNG of the Meganium throughout this raid, boosting its attack and its defense by one stage. Now, we've got one more Rage Fist to hit now. If we get a critical hit, this is going to really help us get through this shield. If you don't get lucky, though, you're going to be doing damage just like that, and you're going to have to rely on the Terrestrialization to kind of help power you through this next stage. It's sometimes good to show you some bad RNG. We've had good RNG in this raid, but for the majority of it, we've not had the best RNG. Now we are at the point where we can terrestrialize. We're not going to be hit for super effective damage from those Zen headbutts anymore. So we can lock in with that and hope that we do hit those critical hits because we still got the boost from that focus energy earlier on in the raid. And if we do hit the critical hits throughout the rest of the raid, we're going to make it very, very quick. But like I've already mentioned, it's very RNG dependent how quick you get through the raid. Annihilate a pretty good option overall, but just not as consistent as the Skeledurge. And you can see here, not getting those critical hits is just not getting the damage that you need. And you're really relying to break the shield to get those critical hits through the raid. Now you can go for subsequent bulk ups here because the Meganium only gets rid of your stat boosts once throughout the raid. But you kind of want to just try and plow through it as quick as possible so locking in with the rage fist is probably the better option here than sitting for six turns setting up bulk ups uh, you are going to be able to take attacks a lot better but you know the chances of you getting a critical hit are probably higher throughout the six turns so you can get rid of the shield early and then after that point it's going to be easy to remove the meganium but like i say sometimes you hit the critical hits sometimes you don't but with those two bulk ups that you've got access to you're going to be in a really easy position with that shell bell held item to just fire these off continuously and recover health and not really have to worry about getting knocked out but when you do hit the critical hit like this right here 
the damage is significant. You're going to be able to do a lot of damage to the Meganium and put yourself in a really good position to close the raid out very quickly. The only problem is landing those critical hits. And like I've already mentioned a hundred times already throughout this raid, it just comes down to if the RNG favors you in that turn or not. We'll take another Zen Headbutt for our troubles. But now in a position where we can fire another Rage Fist off. Another critical hit here will probably be enough to close the raid up. And you can see how quick it is. But then again, if we don't get a critical hit, it's probably going to take a few more turns. But there we go. Another critical hit. So these focus energies in this situation showing a really good example of how quick you can run through the raid. It's just that initial setup that you need to go for. Bulldoze coming out. That's going to proc our defined ability because it will lower our speed by one stage. But we've got a plus two. And that can also kind of help expedite the raid as well with the Annihilate, but not the most consistent, but a very fun and quick set to run through the Meganium over this weekend. And of course, we do have those drops for Herba Mystica as well. So depending on what you want to do, if you're wanting to run and farm for Herba Mystica, I would probably suggest going for the Skeledurge, although it's about two minutes slower to do on average than the Annihilate. Um, it does seem the more consistent and on an overall plan where you're doing a lot of these raids, the Skeledurge probably come out on top over the Annihilate because of the RNG factors here. And you can see we get one Sour Herba Mystica for our trouble. But that's the Annihilate build and basically the premise that you're going to want to follow throughout the raid when you're going in with it. And of course, because you only get one seven star raid on your map per day, after you've beaten, you want to farm more, come into your home menu, system settings, down into system and date and time and just toggle through the date and time options here click ok of course you need to make sure that your synchronized clock by the internet is set to off and come back into game and all of your dens will respawn again including that seven star raid or the meganium so you can just locate it on your map and fly over to it so that is everything for today's video with the skeledurge being the most consistent build for the meganium and the annihilate being a very quick way to beat it but a little bit more rng dependent you're gonna have no trouble going in and beating this pokemon and farming for herba mystica or just picking it up while the raid is running over this weekend hope you found today's video useful if you have do drop a like on the video it does really help and do subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all of our pokemon scarlet and violet content and let me know down in the comment section below before you go what you think the next seven star raid pokemon will be we should get a new announcement when this event ends on sunday evening so i don't know what to expect going forward i'd kind of be happy if we got something like for alligator but I'm still hoping at some point we get some mythical or legendary Pokemon added into the games. Considering that the new VG season starting and it is going to be one restricted Pokemon. So now feels like a good time to throw some of them into the mix if that was the plan in the first place. But I'd love to hear and we'll look forward to reading through what your thoughts are on that next 7 star Terror Raid Pokemon. We'll leave it there friends. Thank you so much for the support. Tuning in. Hope you found today's video useful. Have fun with the event over the weekend. And I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then take care of yourselves and bye bye.